Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about smoothing planes. What are they? How do they work? How do you set them up? What are some of the problems we can have with them? And we're going to be going into this in a little bit more detail. It's kind of a fun topic because once you get the smoothing plane done right, every other plane in the shop suddenly makes sense. So let's dive in and take a look at this. The smoothing plane. Um, what is a smoothing plane? Now, some people out there are going to say a smoothing plane is a number four hand plane. And others are going to say, no, a smoothing plane is a number three hand plane. Some are going to say, no, it's a four and a half. And some are going to say it's a five. Uh, a smoothing plane is whatever plane you use to smooth the board. Now, that sounds a bit simple, but there are a few things that go into a good smoothing plane that make it a good smoothing plane. And for instance, let's actually compare it to a jointing plane. A jointer plane is a long sole. It covers from usually like 20 to 24 inches. This is in number eight, it is 24 inches long. And the nice thing about a jointing plane is it allows you to joint a board. It allows you to flatten it out. So if the board has any ups and downs in it, this will only hit the ups because if it's sitting here on a hill and it's sitting here on a hill, the mouth won't be hitting the valley. It will only hit the next hill it comes to. Whereas with a smoothing plane, sometimes we want it to be able to ride with those because we want to just hit those spots that need a little bit of work. Sometimes you have a little bit of tear out in one area. The smoothing plane allows you to just focus on that one area and take off a little bit of material to get down through that tear out until you get a nice smooth surface. It doesn't make enough of an undulation that your hand can feel it as it slides across but it will make it nice and smooth so as your hand slides across it feels buttery smooth surface all the way. And so having a smaller sole on it makes it very nice because then you can actually make that little bit of undulation that the jointing plane will skip over. And that is what makes a smoothing plane a smoothing plane. So a smoothing plane, no matter what you choose, is often the last plane to touch the work. It will leave a buttery smooth surface that sanding can only hope to dream at. And it is so much easier and the curls make it so much more fun. Now there's a couple other options. You can use a card scraper, like the Wood by Rate card scraper, which you can buy on my website. And once you master one of these, they can do amazing things because this can go against the grain and clean up tear out in beautiful ways. And if that's a little bit too difficult for you, sometimes using a cabinet scraper on flat surfaces. This is basically a card scraper in a plain sole, so you get a little bit of the burnishing action of the sole, this will make a good surface. Uh, but today we're not going to be talking about these. If you want to see it, I have videos on both a cabinet scraper and card scraper so you can see how to use them and what they're for. They can do the finishing work, but once you've learned to set up a perfectly set up smoothing plane, it does amazing things and this will often be what you're reaching for for the last touch on the work. So here's a few examples of some of the most common smoothers. The number four is by far the most common. It is a nice sole size. It's probably the one that most people think of when they think of a smoothing plane. Now a lot of people really like the number three because it is thinner. It allows you to focus in on some of those, uh, those spots a little bit easier. It's also a little bit shorter, not a whole lot shorter than the four. But a number three does make it a little bit easier to focus and hit those spots. Some people do like to go all the way down to the number two. I find it to be a little bit too small for my grip. It's hard to hold on to, and so I don't generally use the number two. And some people like the number four and a half. It has a similar sole length, but being a wider plane, it allows you to smooth larger areas quicker. Uh, so some people like this, and some people say that it gives you a little bit flatter surface. It means you have to do a little bit larger area. So if you're just working in tear out one spot, you have to do a little bit bigger area with this than you have to do with others. But it still makes it very useful. My general go-to smoother is this custom plane from Veritas. Um, and this is really my all-time favorite tool. It's just it's so much fun. I have an entire video dedicated to using this as a smoother. So if you want to see that, I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, but this is basically a number four with a lot of other bells and whistles. Feels good and is the plane that I really like. Now a lot of people like to use wooden planes, or in this case a transitional plane, which is really nice because the wood will burnish your surface much much better than steel will, and it feels really good to be sliding a wooden sole on the work. In this case you have all the extras of adjustability that you would normally get with a Bailey pattern plane, but you can get it in the wooden sole. So it gives you all the benefits of wood with all of the functionality of a steel plane. The other thing that makes a smoothing plane a smoothing plane is how it's set up. You can set up a jointer 
to give you smoothing cuts and, and do smoothing work, but it requires a lot more work to set up one of these. So what all do you need to actually do to turn a regular number four, or number four and a half in this case, into a smoothing plane? So number one, the blade has to be deadly sharp. It has got to be beyond standard sharp and has to be absolutely razor sharp, as sharp as it can possibly be. The sharper you can get the blade, the better the curls you're gonna get. So here I have my sharpening system. I have my extra coarse, coarse, fine, extra fine. And this is my normal system. And generally these last two here, I only use for really cleaning things up. This one I only pull out when I have big nicks I need to get rid of. So most of the time I'm just gonna be using these two fine stones and then a strop. But for smoothing planes, I try to keep them as sharp as possible. I'll pull them out of the plane, I'll keep the chip breaker on here, and let's bring it straight to the strop. So every five or six minutes of using a smoothing plane, I'm gonna pull it out, I'm just gonna strop it 30 or 40 strokes, I'm gonna put it back in and go. And that's all I do, leaving this on there. Now if I have a nick in the blade or it's starting to waver, then I'll bring it back and I'll do the medium, I'll do the fine, and I'll strop it again and I'll get rid of it. Unless there's a big nick, then I'll take it back to one of these. But most of the time, I'm just going to be stopping and using the strop, just keeping this as sharp as possible. So the next thing I want to look at is the mouth opening. I want that mouth to be as tight as it possibly can. Uh, the rule of thumb is you want it to be two shavings thick mouth for a smoothing plane. Um, you want to close that up as much as possible. With other planes, you want a bigger mouth so that you're not clogging up in there. But in this case, you want it really, really nice and tight. So get that as close to the front of the mouth as you can. With Bailey pattern planes, you do that by moving the frog forward and backward. And you can do that by loosening the two screws and actually sliding the frog forward so it slides the iron closer to the front of the mouth. On the newer ones, there's actually a screw back here that allows you to fine tune it. So you can loosen these two up, fine tune it with the screw and slide it forward and backward to get it exactly where you want it. On some of the older ones, that screw isn't there so you have to kind of fiddle with it a bit more to move it backward and forward and get the mouth just right. On the custom planes or some of the low angle planes, they actually have a mouthpiece here so I can loosen this up and I can slide the mouth backward and forward to close it up and get that close to the iron. This is one of the drawbacks to a wooden sole is that over time the sole wears out and you have to re-flatten the sole. Well, that means you're taking thickness off of the plane and the mouth on this starts to open up really wide. And so over time, as you remove more material, that mouth becomes really big and that might cause an issue in that you start getting tear out because your mouth is too large on these. Now the next thing we want to look at is the chip breaker. The chip breaker is actually a really important piece of material. And this is one of the things that I don't like about low angle planes is that you can't use a chip breaker. This actually does a lot of work to mitigate tear out and will give you a smoother surface having a chip breaker on the back of the iron. When we put it on there, we want to keep it away from the tip as much as possible, but then I want to slide it forward to the tip so that it gets really darn close and the closer you can get it, the better chance you're going to mitigate tear out. If I'm working on a board where there's a possibility of a lot of tear out, I'm gonna get this a shaving or two away from the front there and I'm gonna keep it as close as possible. Most of the time I'm gonna have it about a 30 second of an inch away from the tip. And keeping that as close as possible will provide you with a really nice smooth surface. So now our plane is all set up. We're nice and tight. We're sharp, our mouth is as closed as possible, the chip breaker is close to the end, everything is tuned up within an inch of its life. Now we can actually take this over and test it out and do a lot of the detail tuning on it and get this precisely where we want it. So now we can grab the plane, give it a couple test runs and see what do the curls look like. Now in this case, the curls almost look like curly, fuzzy hair. They're incredibly light, they stick to the finger, uh, but that's not what we're looking for. This usually is a sign that you have a couple micro nicks in your iron and it might be good to take it back and sharpen it. I'd probably go back to the fine stone with this because I want to get that a little bit smoother. Normally I'm going to grab the iron, put it on and go until I actually start to hit something. Each time I'm going to advance the knob just like a 30th of a turn, just a tiny amount until I get what I'm looking for. These shavings that are light enough that they stick to the finger when they still have some static electricity, they don't want to fall off. And you know you're starting to get close. I want the shavings to be about the thickness that I can read through them. You can see this one's not quite there. So that's actually a little bit too thick for a smoothing shaving for me. Whereas this one on the other hand, this one when I put it down on there, you can read through it just as if it's not there. It is just as clear and every word comes through and it's smoothed out. That's what I'm looking for with the shaving. 
So here's an example of what a good smoothing plane can do. This is a piece of hickory, and hickory is just a, a horrible wood to plane. And in particular in this one, the grain goes up and it goes down and it comes back up. And there's going to be some tear out here on the end. So I'm going to grab a low angle plane, and this is actually set up with a fairly tight mouth, and it has a 25 degree iron in there right now, and it's going to cause some problems because low angle planes cause all this tear out, and it just it looks horrible on there. Um, and no matter what you do, you're never going to get this to be able to clean the tear out. But with a bevel down plane and the chip breaker and all the other things, I can actually come through here and after a few passes, even going against the grain on this one, I have this surface that is buttery smooth, no sanding needed, and incredibly enjoyable. Not to mention you get all these curls that are just so much fun to play with. So I hope you've enjoyed this topic as much as I do because once you master a smoothing plane and you can get those beautiful shavings against the grain without any tear out and they're so light and buttery that they just they float around, ah, that is happiness and I really, really enjoy this. Even in woods like hickory and white oak that are just so fractious that they tear apart, you can get a really nice smooth surface with a hand plane if it's set up well. So I hope you like this bit of information. I know there's a lot more questions out there. Please let me know down in the comments. I will get to as many as I can. If I don't answer your comment, feel free to send me a message on my channel. I love to uh, answer that. As well as I do a live every week on Tuesday, so you can come on there and ask me questions on the live um, as I'm doing some other projects. So I'd love to see you there. And that's about it for today. Until next time. Have a wonderful day. I've never understood the saying as smooth as a baby's bottom. My kid's bottom's like sandpaper. <laughs>